The Greens have been pushing for a federal corruption watchdog for 13 years now and will be supporting this bill. But I think it's worth being clear that the National Anti-Corruption Commission on its own is not going to be the silver bullet that deals with so many of the concerns in the public and the institutional uh, influence that often, in particular, big corporations wield over our political system. And it's worth noting that a lot of the concerns in the public and ones that the Greens share are that too often it seems like big corporations are able to wield enormous influence over the political process, often in what are technically completely legal ways. This bill does nothing to address the revolving door between politics and big business. Ministers from both major parties and their senior staff routinely go on to work for the industries they were supposed to be regulating, sitting on boards, taking on generous consultancies or lobbying their former colleagues in government. Indeed, it's worth considering just a list of the uh, past ministers and uh, major party MPs that have gone on to work for big corporations or their associated lobby groups. Down at the state level, we've got ex-Premier of Queensland, Anna Bly, now the CEO of the Australian Banking Association. Ian McFarlane went from the industry minister to the, to the board of Woodside and CEO of the Queensland Resource Council. His ALP counterpart, Martin Ferguson, took a role as the chairman of the Australian Petroleum Production and Exploration Association's Advisory Council. Just this week, Joel Fitzgibbon is in the news because he's joined the board of Brickworks, a company which invests in coal mines and has profited from the New Hope Coal Corporation, just the type of fossil fuel development Fitzgibbon pushed for in his time in parliament. Nicola Roxon, former health minister, later worked for the private health insurance fund Bupa. Ben Wyatt, former treasurer in WA under, la under a Labor government who joined the boards of Rio Tinto and Woodside immediately after retiring from politics. Brendan Nelson, former defence minister and now president of Boeing Australia, a top five defence contractor. Indeed, these are not just isolated cases. The Grattan Institute has found that since the 90s, more than a quarter of major party federal MPs who served in executive government move across to peak bodies, lobbying firms or directly into big business after their retirement from politics. That is a massive problem, in particular because too often the uh, surely one of the sort of general uh, motivations for these uh, corporations or peak lobby groups in hiring ex-ministers or ex-government or opposition MPs is because of their connections into those governments or, or, or political parties. And I think the general public would assume that that is a generally bad and, and terrible uh, precedent to set and uh, standard and something that we should be doing a lot better on. Certainly, I, the Greens have pre previously proposed that we should be banning ex-politicians and, in particular, ministers from going on to work for lobby organisations or big corporations that they previously were in charge of regulating. Nor does this do anything to address corporate donations and cash for access meetings. Cash for access meetings via fundraising forums don't count as donations. Often they're listed as other receipts. And the ALP's Federal Labor Business Forum costs $110,000 a year, giving donors the chance to mingle with ministers at dinners and drinks and be briefed on policy. Members of both parties' fundraising arms in the 2019-2020 included West Farmers, Woodside Energy, banks and resource companies and big pharma companies, alongside consulting firms like PwC and Deloitte, who regularly win government contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars a year. It is completely inappropriate that we have a fundraising strategy by the major parties that involves giving special access to government ministers and shadow ministers, uh, which the big corporations will often pay either $110,000 or $27,500. In the past, we know corporations like Bupa have paid for that access to government ministers, which uh, is completely inappropriate. And indeed, it, uh, when you think about it in simple terms, the effect is that if you have $27,500 or $110,000, you get access to government ministers and opposition shadow ministers that you otherwise wouldn't get. We're meant to live in a democracy, and it seems deeply inappropriate that someone who doesn't have $27,500 to spare or $110,000 for the Federal Labor Business Forum uh, isn't able to get the sort of access that those big corporations are. And indeed, I, would, I think most people generally agree that big corporations already wield far too much uh, power and influence over politics. Bob Brown, uh, when advocating for a National Anti-Corruption Commission, wrote uh, way back in 2009 that the current political culture in Australia decrees that if you hand a minister $10,000 in a paper bag marked for you in return for a talk about your business plans, it is a bribe. But if you hand that $10,000 to a party official to sit next to the minister at dinner and discuss your business plans, that's perfectly above board. 
In recent years, the fossil fuel industry has donated millions of dollars to both major parties, including $670,000 to the Coalition and $470,000 to Labor in 2020-21. According to the Australian Democracy Network's report on state capture, this roughly even spread of donations to both sides of politics is a major red flag, suggesting that the fossil fuel industry are comfortable no matter which part major parties in power, their interests will be taken care of. At a very minimum, we need to ban and ban our end cash for access meetings, ban all corporate donations, crack down on lobbying and end the revolving door between politicians, their staff and industry jobs. Because while the National Anti-Corruption Commission is a crucial and important step in tackling what is often the system, systematic problems with corruption and malpractice in both federal and state politics, the other big problem at the moment, which this bill still does not address, which is the often perfectly legal under our current laws ways that big corporations influence the political process to a degree that ordinary people don't have access to. And that is a major problem. Thank you.